Evening, everybody. I get a lot of questions and inquiries on my walking sticks and my staffs that I make. And I thought I might take a few minutes and just show everybody exactly what I'm doing. I'm just a little short, you know, on how to make walking sticks. Um, so easy to do. Anybody can do this. And uh, it's a nice way to pass the time. And I usually will take the sticks with me when I go camping around the bonfire. Uh, sometimes even out in the fire pit, just out in the backyard, I'll just sit out here and just whittle away. But anyway, I have a few here in different stages of uh, uh, being done. And I thought maybe I'd just show you them. We got some uh, Manitoba maple here. This one here, I'm actually doing for a subscriber. Now, she wanted to commission me. I don't sell my sticks. I usually just do them and give them away to friends and family, you know, who appreciate them. Uh, but we got into some good conversation, so I decided this one time I was going to uh, make one for her. So, yes, Sharon, this one's going to be yours. It's a piece of uh, Manitoba maple. Now, this one... Um, is actually a shoot off of a main tree. Uh, the thing about Manitoba maple is there's a fungus that grows in them and it actually stains the wood. So you can get some really, really beautiful colorings. And because um, it survives in our extreme climate, like we get wicked summers and wicked winters here. So with the extremes, these, these trees have learned to adapt. But they do scar, so you can you can see these are all just little scars and things, uh, all these knots and and like I said, the fungus grows inside and and you get some beautiful colorings. Here's a piece that I'm working on right now. Um, it's just gotten down to the stage where I'm actually going to start to sand it, and this is the exact same type of wood as what we're looking at here. Uh, I'm calling him Mr. Bibbs, actually, because he actually looks like he has a face. I thought that was pretty cool, so I decided I was going to work with it. And I'm making it for somebody who's left-handed here. So, yeah, his mouth just serves perfect for the thumb. That's just going to feel so nice. And over the course of the years, that person's going to wear themselves a nice spot. And actually, and on the top... And, feels absolutely amazing on the ball of my ball of my hand and you just take a look at your sticks as you're as you're taking them off the rack and you can just visualize the design that you're going to to do with it this one I decided to work as a cane and uh, yeah that one still another month away I'll be varnishing it with a a nice clear coat water-based barathane and I'll sand in between my coats on that one. I think I'll keep the colors pretty natural. Sometimes people will stain um, to make it have that effect. This one here is actually a piece. Here, let me show you this. This is my walking cane. I did not make this one, but it's the one that inspired me into the hobby of making walking sticks and staffs and, and canes. And this one uh, is number, I'm just going to show you here, the gentleman who made it for me. He came to visit me at my work a few times and uh, it took me a while to pick this one, but I finally found it. It fit me, this fit me perfect and I'll have this one right to the end. It's a little tall and as I become a senior or whatever, I'll, I'll just maybe take a few inches off the top of it. We'll see. But yeah, that's mine. That's not going anywhere, and uh, I love them. So in a case, uh, what's that? Newfield, number three hundred five, Diamond Willow, Tintown, Manitoba. Yeah, and he does he does beautiful work. He does really nice pieces. This one here is a piece of aspen, and I racked this. Uh, a year ago, so it's nice and dry. It's like one quarter of what it weighed before. It's a soft wood. It's really nice for carving. I'm planning on uh, using this one. I'm going to carve um, cats and kittens and in different stages of playfulness and stuff. And and this is going to be a cane um, 
for somebody and I can take my time doing this because it's going to be a, hopefully decades before she she actually needs it but this is going to be something special I think I'm going to do for my sister Tracy uh, this one here is also a piece of aspen you can see how nice I've taken the bark the bark right off of this and uh, you can see how nice and white that is when I take my my sticks when I first cut them down actually I should backtrack a little bit what I do is I go out in the spring and I take my my shoots and my trees with um, safety tape you don't want to cut them down at that time because they're bleeding and sapping you should never cut your your sticks down until they're already in hibernation for the winter um, and then in the winter time I actually go out and I I cut them down and I've actually got some video I think of me in some pretty wicked storms cutting these these things down but yeah maybe I'll, I'll shoot one up on on to YouTube at some point to, they're pretty funny <laughs> but um, so then I'll cut them down in the in the winter time and you can see here that I bag the ends when I bag the ends, it's just um, so that your sticks dry evenly because you know they start they start quite thick, right? And then they thin they thin right out at the top. A couple of months before I take the bag off the the ends, the skinny ends, I'll take them off of the wider ends there, um, just so that uh, they just dry a little bit more evenly again. And it just helps so that, you know, your wood doesn't crack and makes it so that you can uh, work with it easier. Now, when I cut them down and I actually bring them back to the house, I like to take the bark off right away. I just, like, use my uh, Henkel uh, paring knife. Uh, this is what we use for our potatoes, but it just works awesome at, um, at taking the, the bark off. And I do that right away. You can do that you know after your sticks dry but uh, you're gonna double triple the work of getting it off afterwards I usually will leave the knots on and uh, and I'll dig this out I found this doodad in my tools and it's really actually kind of neat because um, I just actually get right in there and I just dig the knots right out and I can shape it you know if I want to do this diamond willow pattern or what have you but I'm doing um, exterior Okay, um, this one here, I'm just pushing out the knots. I think it looks really quite terrific. And, uh, and again, this is the same wood as this one here and this one here. So, so you get a good idea of how it looks when it's finished. Um, this wood here has adapted quite well to the extremes in the weather here in Manitoba. It's really, really hot in the summer, really, really cold in the, in the winter. And, uh, and I never seem to have much of a problem uh, with cracking. I mean, if you, you crack your, your wood, you could pretty much write it off as a project piece. And what else do I want to say here about my sticks? I can make another uh, video on finishing pieces. Sometimes I carve into the wood, sometimes I whittle. These ones here I'm actually stripping down, down working around my knots and into the, the coloring of the stain. I just really want to show as much of that stain off as I possibly can. Uh, and I have a, another couple of weeks I think on this piece. But hopefully it'll look pretty nice, and uh, maybe I can do another video, and and uh, maybe uh, I'll show you what Mr. Bibbs looks like after I've got her all finished. But in any case, uh, if you like my videos, let me know, and uh, maybe I'll do another one at some point. Thank you for watching, and have a great night.